Remember, when we think about non-point source pollution, one of the biggest culprits is us. It's impervious surface, that's what we talked about, but pollution and pollutants get onto the, to those impervious surfaces because of society. Although industries may contribute to non-point source pollution, it's really you and me. So in this video, we're gonna explore how you and me and your neighbor and your friends and your family can help to reduce non-point source pollution because we are the major culprits. So let's start with just something simple, thinking about washing your car. And whenever you need to get your car washed, you face one of two possibilities. You could, like you see on the left, go to a professional car wash place, or I'll also loop into here one of those places where you can do it yourself, but it's still at another location. Or you can do what's on the right and do it at home. Now, it seems unimportant, but this small decision actually makes an impact to non-point source pollution. So which one do you think that you should be doing? So either one you say, you know, you, you, you do you, but if you want to reduce that non-point source pollution, you actually should be going to a professional place to get it done. And the reason for that is that a professional company, whether it's a, they have do it yourself little garages or there's a machine or there's people there that are doing it, they're a company. And as a company, they have to collect those wastes and either send them to a wastewater treatment plant, they have to treat them on site. They are part of the Clean Water Act. They are a point source polluter. They are regulated to reduce the amount of pollutants they're releasing. So when you wash your car at home, all that soap, all that grime goes onto your driveway, which goes into a gutter, which goes into a storm drain, untreated. But at a company, and I'll be vague on purpose, but at a company, they have to collect that water. Maybe it goes to a wastewater treatment plant. Maybe they treat it. But either way, it is not directly entering the environment. So small choices can make a large impact. Another thing that we can do is scooping the poop. So for you dog owners out there and maybe cat owners out there, picking up your pet poop. I'll say dog poop, but I don't want to exclude the cat owners there out there. So you may be thinking, well, yeah, it's important to make things beautiful, but how does this have to do with pollution? So waste from animals, particularly warm-blooded animals, such as your furry friends at home, they have E. coli in them. Our waste also has E. coli. Deer and rabbit waste also has E. coli. It's, it's pretty common in our digestive system. And E. coli in our water bodies can cause a lot of issues. So for example, you're walking your dog along the sidewalk. Your dog kind of pulls over, poops in the grass right next to the sidewalk. You leave it there and you go home. Next day it rains and that rain washes that poop that was right next to the sidewalk onto the sidewalk. That leads into a gutter, that leads into a storm drain, that leads into a water body. And if we have a large influx of warm-blooded animal poop, such as dog poop, you're going to have problems with E. coli, um, especially after thunderstorms. Now you might be thinking, well, if like deer poop and rabbit poop and like other warm-blooded animals, like also have E. coli, why does it matter about my dog? Like there's all these other animals, we don't go pick up deer poop. Think about where deers poop though. They're in forests, they're in fields, they're, they're pooping like in nature. But so when it rains, their poop isn't really washing away into like a storm drain. It maybe washes to like another part of the forest or the field. Your dog, who you were just walking along a trail or a road or a sidewalk, that poop is very close to an impervious surface. So it has a greater potential to wash up into our waterways versus, say, natural animals and their poop. And it's also, again, if you're walking your dog in your neighborhood, like, don't be that person. If you've ever stepped in dog poop, you know how horrible it is. So do not be that contributor uh, to dog waste. All right, let's think bigger. 
So those were some things that you could do to kind of reduce um, kind of some of the habits you have. Something maybe bigger you can do is to create, <clears throat> excuse me, is to create more pervious surface. So getting rid of the impervious surface and bringing in the pervious surface, creating surfaces that water can move through. So for example, maybe at home, you might have a driveway likely made out of concrete, which is an impervious surface, but let's say you're getting a whole bunch of cracks in it, you've been wanting to replace it, so you get it removed, but instead of putting a whole slab of concrete in, you could do something like we see here. There's a lot of different names for what you're looking at. Um, pavers, that's P-A-V-E-R-S. Pavers is one of the names for it. And what you notice is it's still a little concrete. You need that support, especially if you're going to park on it. But you also see there's a lot of grass. So while, yes, there's still some imperviousness to it, you have the, the small concrete squares, you also have a whole lot more grass coverage than you would have if it was 100% concrete. So the ability for water to go through your driveway has greatly increased. Something else you can do, this is a super extreme form of it, but I liked the picture, so I'm gonna use it, is thinking about your roof. Now this may or may not really be doable with wherever you live, but just a consideration, or maybe you have a flat part of your roof where it becomes a little bit easier to do this, but you can have a green roof. Now what a green roof is that you see in this picture these people are like legit just growing grass on their roof. Um, so there's a layer of soil, there's grass so that when it rains, yes, some will still run off, but some of it will also get absorbed by that soil and by that grass. And so you're reducing the amount of runoff on your roof. Again, if you have a flat roof uh, or parts of it are flat, you could even put garden a, a garden up there. And a lot of newer buildings are trying to take advantage of this space. It's impervious, but you can make it pervious by including, uh, particularly including different types of plant life. Now, you might look at these two projects and be like, wow, that looks uh, really, really expensive. Like, I couldn't afford to do that. And you're right. Like, those are not cheap projects to do. But... This video is being made for people who live in Montgomery County, Maryland, so this may or may not apply to wherever you live. Here in Montgomery County, we have lots of different rebates, all meant to tackle impervious surface, all meant to tackle runoff. So for example, um, if you wanted to create a rain garden in your yard, so a low point in your yard that has a lot of plants that help soak up rain or conservation landscaping, they'll give you money. You wanna remove that concrete driveway, they'll give you money. If you wanna add a rain barrel or a larger rain barrel called a cistern, they'll give you money. If you wanna put in a permeable pavement or a green roof, they give you money and it's a good amount. You can get rebates up to $7,500. Or if you live in an apartment building or a condo or a townhouse, they also offer rebates up to 20,000. So these initiatives exist and these are run by our local department of the environmental protection for Montgomery County. So imagine the EPA, that's like the whole federal government. The Department of Environmental Protection is like very specifically our county and they are on top of it, providing lots of incentives for people to try to reduce their impervious surface in their everyday lives. And then last but not least, just kind of raising awareness. Not everyone knows that storm drains aren't treated. Not everyone maybe cares about it. If you think about kids, I mean, that's not really something like taught at a very young age. And so one way we can raise awareness is through different art or labeling efforts for storm drains. So these are two different ones. The bottom left is uh, an actual like art piece and the right just being very clearly like, hey, don't dump. This goes straight into the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so raising that awareness so that people know that whatever they see going into that storm drain is going to impact the Chesapeake Bay, the Mississippi River, their local creeks, etc. 
here in Montgomery County, you actually can be part of this labeling project. Uh, and maybe even your lo localities, you can also find that too. Something else you can do are cleanups. So cleanups of roads, of beaches, of uh, parks, of river streams. Any trash that can be removed from our environment is reducing the amount that will eventually end up into our water environments. Maybe someone throws down a can and it doesn't wash away immediately. It might take a year, it might take five years before it gets loosened enough to enter a waterway, but eventually it will, right? So if you can clean up whatever you see or get a group of friends together and make a concerted effort to be like, we're gonna clean this mile of segment. This picture that popped up are students from previous semesters doing a road cleanup right next to campus. And look at how much that we collected. You can make an impact. Uh, and if you don't do it, no one else is. People don't really get paid for things like this. It's usually volunteer effort. So again, as a reminder, like you and I, we're the ones who produce a lot of the non-point source pollution. So critical for us to take advantage of better practices, such as going to a, a official car wash, from picking up our dog poop, from raising awareness and cleaning up trash, um, to doing our own projects in our household that makes more pervious surfaces. Now, there's another video that's gonna look at much bigger changes that maybe cities can do, but know that you can make a really strong impact as well.